Movie notes on Raise Your Voice 2004 film, 3 September 2024 viewing. Ooh. 20 year mark. Uh, approximately. I'm Tans Corley, Leonardo, she, her, hers in Seattle. This is my movie notes for my Tuesday, 3 September 2024 viewing of the 2004 film Raise Your Voice. This is my own personal copy. It even is Blockbuster Case. Yes, I bought this about when it came out on DVD. Yeah, it's the Blockbuster Inc. Raise Your Voice, uh, March 27, 2005 DVD. It has the date on the back. Okay, so <laughs> this is a, my description I came up with for this viewing is it's a fiction film about a female teenager whose older brother dies following his sending in application materials to a music school for her. Then her attending the school once she finds out she's been accepted. So yes, so she's in a family with two children and she's the younger sibling and has an older brother and then there's a car crash and he dies and not her. And so this movie is a bit about, um, but before he dies he sends in her some, some stuff as like app application materials for her uh, for a music school. and. So then he dies and she gets accepted and she wants to go and so then, but her dad's not necessarily supportive. So then it's about, I think it's her mom and her aunt kind of figuring out how to get her to go. Um, and then getting the dad on board kind of once she's gone. And so it's really kind of about her coping with grief and the loss of her brother and the struggle of, right, she was in, the, so both she and her brother were in the car, but only the brother was killed. So there's the grief of the brother being gone, but then there's also kind of like the spiritual component of why him, not me. And so she, this movie is kind of about the um, healing, I guess the healing process of it and healing through something she's enjoyed. Um, and she gets to kind of honor her brother in that way in, in terms of um, once being accepted, actually going to the school. So it's kind of honoring her brother in that sense. Um, but while also doing something she enjoys. So it's a good movie. I own I own it. I've watched it a number of times. I used to watch it fairly frequently. Um, even as someone who does not sing and has not been in choir or anything like that. So I was like, can I think of, uh, I, I introduced this as on this movie watch list for this week or earlier this morning. And then I went out to squirrel dinner in my parents went to Costco today looking for peanuts because they went recently and they didn't have peanuts and there were no peanuts either time. And so I was encouraging the squirrels to speak up and raise their voice. So this is a raising their voice exercise. Is the squirrels of the Leonardi backyard ask Mr. David Beckham to restock the local Costco with peanuts. They have been out the past couple times my parents went. They say, please, Mr. Beckham, and send you their wishes. They also say they will trade me, their mom, as your slave, Mr. Be Beckham, in exchange for peanuts. So that's, that's what they're they're thinking. They're thinking, okay, she can be our slave and we can get peanuts. That's, that, that's, that's their little squirrely dreams. I, I'm just, they've got, they want peanuts. Please help if you can. They even have black squirrels in a place called Bellingham, but you probably already knew that. Ooh, Cobb flicks his tail. Please, Mr. Beckham. It's almost like you designed this. Okay. All right. I also came up with another waiting sequence. So I've, I talk, I've talked about one. I even wrote it down today, you guys. The sequence of the 10 for, was it virginity stuff? Okay. And then I also read out, so I wrote another sequence is this one for weddings. So it goes, Thomas Seishon, Nicolo Martinengi. Karsten Warholm, Noah Lyles, Andre Minikov, Kylian Mbappe, Florent Monadieu, Maxime Grusset, Hubert Coates. Okay, so that's the sequence. That's nine instead of ten. And then Karsten Warholm, Warholm, choose me, I choose you. So there's another one to think about is that weddings, right? It'd be like a Venn diagram, but not. So if each person gets a number, like if these sequences, like who's in each pool stays true, it'd be like a Venn diagram. Right, that gets filled in as people get filled in, but then like in the overlap region, if somebody, does that work? 
No, they can't be the same on both. It's supposed to be mutually exclusive, but then it's like an output if they end up being a certain sequence number. But it doesn't count for the other sequence. So it'd be like sequence and order number. So it's meant to be no overlap. So somebody like, okay, I'm confusing myself. Sorry. Okay, last point. What? So since I'm not a musician and I'm not a singer and stuff like that, and there's a competition in here, and I think, what is it? The electric violin wins. <laughs> um... Which nowadays, electric violins are what, like everywhere? So, you know, they all go back 20 years and electric violins were in Hollywood. So, it's not really new. Um, the, it's, so, I was like, what would it be for me? So, let's say running is music school for me. And this time, like, think about training. So, could I come up with, like, a training scenario that might be, like, a music school scenario? Okay. So, I thought, I don't know. Another one. Um, me taking notes while Josh runs a set. Me. You're mad at me. Josh nods yes. Me. I look down at my body and then up and say, it's because I'm wearing clothes. Josh looks at me, me starts chuckling, <laughs> Josh says, that's really not funny. <laughs> Us, training continues. So I thought that was a pretty good one. Actually, <laughs> it just came to me today. I was, I was just thinking, and I was like, Phew. Josh was there, and he was mad at me, and I was like, Oh, oh I'm wearing clothes. Oh, so yeah, that's what I came up with. So those are my movie notes and Raise Your Voice, 2004 film, 3 September 2024 viewing.